It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Close Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch, with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Levin. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Great Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Great Nuts Flakes, buckaroos. They're great. Now, here's our story. It is after hours in the Eureka Cafe, and the moods of Dale Evans, Pat Brady, and Roy Rogers range from bright enthusiasm to plain, oh well, to downright disgust. Well, I don't know what the West is coming to. I never see anything like it. Say, this is going to be even prettier than I thought it would be. How do you like it, Pat? Mm, all right, I guess, Dale. Hey, are all those decorations good to eat? Sure. Of all the ways for a city to celebrate its centennial, get a load of this list of events they're having in Zenith. Hey, even them little silvery and pearly balls? Sure. They're called silverinis and pearlaroonies. But they're made of sugar, just like these roses and stars. An exhibit of early French paintings and a special showing of unmounted pearls at the museum. Now, I'll spell the sheriff's name out with these silver ones and use the pearly ones for curly cues. Hmm. You know, it tastes pretty good. Pat Brady, you cut it out. A carnival with rides for young and old. I gave up merry-go-rounds before I was ten years old. Oh, I still get kind of a kick out of a Ferris wheel, Roy. Your stomach feels so awful when you stop at the top. And a cookie baking and cake decorating contest. If that isn't a rip-roaring centennial program, I never heard of one. No rodeo, no nothing. Well, I don't see what's the matter with it. I'm decorating this cake to enter in the contest. What? Well, certainly. The sheriff's birthday's Thursday, and I always surprise him with a cake anyway. And if I could just win that $100 prize, well, the heart fund drives on now, and the Easter Seal campaign will be coming up. You know, I wouldn't mind going over to Zenith for one day at least. I get a sort of a boot out of a carnival. Well, you kids run back and forth all you like, but I'm not going to even read the Zenith newspaper until their centennial celebration's over. <laughs> But the Zenith Centennial turned out to be not quite as dull as Roy Rogers had imagined, for in an old stable behind the museum. I tell you, Professor, they're wise to me and Slugger. We got word the marshal's shaking down every inch of the carnival and everybody connected with it. Yeah. We got to find some place to stash these pearls till the heat's off. All right, all right. I'll take care of them. Look, Professor, for your information, you're getting a little suspicious of you, too. You're new in town, you know. Now, if they don't find the pearls at the carney, they'll be searching you next. Well, where'd you hear that? Well, that's what the boys are saying. Well, I won't take any chances, even with a fourth-rate cop like the Zenith Marshal. I'll hide the pearls, and we'll pick them up when the centennial's over. Well, where are you going to hide them? Uh, never mind. But I'm visiting the home crafts exhibit as soon as it closes for the night. The cake that won that night, I think the decorations could be altered just a trifle without anyone knowing the, the difference. <laughs> And now, on the closing day of the Zenith Centennial, we find Roy, Dale, and the Sheriff in the Eureka Cafe. I uh, really ought to be running along. Oh, don't go, Sheriff. Pat will be back any minute. And, well, he's bringing something from the Centennial that I want you to see. You mean a uh, sort of a surprise? That's what Dale means, Sheriff, but don't you go guessing now. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, must be something special, though, Dale. Your eyes are shining like $768. Well, maybe they're shining like $100. You see, I got some mighty good news this afternoon. Hey, you're a smart cookie, all right, Dale. Or maybe I should say smart cakey. Oh, I don't give him any hints. Well, uh, I might as well wait for Pat. Uh, sort of taking the day off. 
My birthday, you know. Yes, yes we, we know. know. Uh-huh. Uh, some doings over in Zenith, huh? Oh, man, I wouldn't have gone within ten miles of that centennial. I don't mean the centennial. I mean the jewel robbery. Jewel robbery? Sure, they had some sort of an exhibit of pearls at the museum, and somebody lifted them a couple of nights ago. Well, gee, I didn't know that. Well, that's what you get for boycotting the Zenith paper. I didn't know about it myself until this morning. The marshal called me and wanted my advice. Well, maybe there's some of the roustabouts from the wild, wild carnival with rides for young and old. No, the marshal said he went over the grounds and everybody connected with the show with a fine tooth comb, and all he found was two stolen watches. Then he figured the new museum curator they got over there might be the culprit, but he evidently came out with clean hands, too. Well, Sheriff, why don't we go over there? Well, why don't we do it tomorrow? Uh, like I told the marshal, this is my birthday, and I don't want to go chasing after I don't know who, especially when the town's out of my jurisdiction. It's getting awfully late. I, I wonder what could be keeping Pat. Yeah, he ought to be back. Of course, he was driving Nellie Bell, and you can't tell what might have happened. Gee, Willikers, this sure is a pretty cake. And that hundred bucks Dale won ain't to be sneezed at either. I wonder if I'm allergic to something. Maybe this dusty road. Boy, I'm hungry. I bet I could snitch two or three of them shiny decorations and Dale and the sheriff would never know the difference. Oh, oh, there, Nellie Bell. Oh. Mm. I better wait till these riders get by, though, before I uncover the thing. If any dust got on it, boy, Dale would never forgive me. Oh, oh, my gosh. Masked men. Don't reach for those guns. Reach for the birds. Now, look, what's the idea? Go ahead, man. Take his guns and toss them in the ditch, slugger. Sure, sure. Well, look, my guns are the most valuable things I got with me. If you don't want those, why... Shut up and keep reaching. How about that hundred bucks you got? The prize for the cake. That ain't mine. Never mind the money. Take what we want and get going. Now, look, don't you lay a hand on Nellie Bell. What? This two-bit jeep? Hey, what do you want with that cake? Never mind. Handle it gentle, Slugger. Sure, sure. On your horses and get going, man. I'll meet you at the hideout. Right, boss. Now, you see, we didn't hurt you. Look here. That cake was a special birthday present for a friend of mine. Give him a necktie. Oh, neither my friends or I want to be followed right away. There. By the time you get those fixed, you'll be too tired to follow us. Get me, sir. Well, how do you like that? He shoots out my tires and says, when I fix them, I'll be too tired. What a lousy sense of humor. Well, I better go pick up my guns. It didn't take a darn thing but the cake. If that don't take the cake. <laughs> Here comes Pat at last. Well, it's about time. Hey, Nellie Bell's sort of limping. Limping is right. She's running on three tires and one rim. Well, goodness, Pat isn't carrying anything. If he went away and forgot that, well, that surprise. Hey, Pat, we've been expecting you for the last hour. What held you up? Three armed masked men, and they shot out two of Nella Bell's tires, and I only had one spare. What? Uh, what? You oh. were actually held up? Yeah, I sure was. They rode up on me by surprise while I was stopping to snitch a little snitch off of the sheriff's birthday cake. And... Pat Brady! Oh, uh, I mean, well, I didn't actually get around to snitching it, Dale. Uh, just a minute. This is serious. What did the bandits get, Pat? Not a doggone thing except the sheriff's cake. Dale. Did you go and decorate a birthday cake for me again? Well, yes, Sherrick. And it won first prize at the Centennial. And now Pat's gone and done this. Pat, are you sure it wasn't some kind of a joke? Well, you wouldn't have thought so if you'd have seen them guns and heard how tough them fellas talk. Well, no masked men are getting away with my cake. Where did it happen, Pat? Oh, about four miles out of town. Two of the fellas rode off toward the Snake Canyon country with the cake and... The other one seemed to head back toward Zenith. Well, come on. I'll lend you a horse if you can't take Nellie Bell. You ready, Roy? Well, I don't think so, Sheriff. I think you two can handle it alone. And there's something else I, I really ought to do. Take Bullet with you. He's right outside. Well, I'm with you, Sheriff. Uh, can I take the rest of the day off, Dale? 
Well, I guess so, Pat. But... That cake may not mean much to you, Roy, but I'm a sentimental man. Well, Roy, why didn't you go with them? Maybe it isn't much of a robbery, but, well, after all, they're friends of yours, and, well, I just put a lot of work in on that cake. I know, Dale, and I hope we'll get it back. Now, suppose you saddle buttermilk and ride into Zenith with Trigger and me. Into Zenith? Well, what in the world for? I'd sort of like to take a look around that museum. <laughs> How about those great nuts flakes? Take an old hand's advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellas and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. Dale Evans decorates a cake and wins first prize at the Zenith Centennial. But as Pat Brady is bringing it back, he's held up by masked men and the cake is taken from him. As he and the sheriff ride out after the miscreants, Roy and Dale go to Zenith to visit, of all places... The museum. It's nice of you to give us your time, Professor Gage. Oh, not at all, not at all. I'd do anything to get those pearls back. I'm new here, you know, and this robbery will cost me my position and my reputation and, well, everything. We understand the marshal gave you sort of a bad time yesterday. Oh, I should say so. It's highly embarrassing, but I guess I satisfied him. Hey, uh, what did the pearls look like? I mean, uh, how big were they? Oh, uh, various sizes. All unmounted, of course. Oh, lovely things. I wish I'd seen them. How did the thieves get into the museum? Why, uh, uh, well, uh through the back door. Uh, yes, they uh, jimmied it open. Well, it still sounds to me like some of the carnival roustabouts are responsible. Yes, that's my opinion, too. After all, some of them used the old stable behind the museum for their horses. They slept there themselves, for all I know. Let's go out there and take a look around. Uh, can we go out the back way? Oh, certainly, certainly. Are you enjoying it here in Zenith, Professor Gage? <laughs> well, moderately, up to now. Say, uh, you're from the East, aren't you? Do you ride or anything? Oh, oh heavens no. I simply don't have the time for it. Oh, you'll generally find me with my nose in a book. Well, that isn't a bad place to have it sometimes. If I'd have stuck mine in the newspaper the last couple of days, this pearl robbery might not have gotten so far out of hand. No doubt about it, Pat. There's one set of tracks heading back along the road and two sets leading up into Snake Canyon. Well, the two sets of tracks were the ones that took your cake. All right, then. What are we waiting for? Hey, Bullet seems more interested in a single track. Let him follow it if he wants to. Hey, that's a good idea. He, he'll come back and let us know if he finds anything. Go ahead, Bullet. Track him down, boy. Come on, boy. Get up there, you. Now, uh, nice of Dale to want to surprise me with that cake. I just hope we can surprise her by bringing in the fellas that stole it. Yeah, I hope so, too. Now, I'm anxious to get back to Nellie Bell. You know, she's standing out there with only three tires, and her left front wheel might be getting cold. Well, Nellie Bell wouldn't do as much good in this kind of country. My Uncle Fred had an expression, get a horse, and in this case, it applies. All right, Sheriff, I ain't beefing. Nellie Bell sure couldn't take these sharp turns and squeeze through these little gullies like this old plug is doing. Keep your eyes on the ground, Pat. We don't want to lose these prints. Well, it wouldn't matter much if we did. There's no other place for those bandits to go except snaking through here. That's right. It's like the labyrinth of the Minotaur. Uh, come again? Uh, Greek mythology, Pat. You wouldn't necessarily understand. There's something you'll understand. Oh, hit the dirt, Chap. Head up with your hands up. You haven't got a chance. Pat, those rocks above us. We ran into a trap. Just stay right where you are. Oh, you're the character with the jeep, huh? Slugger, take his guns away from him again. I got him, Curly. And now I'll take yours, fella. 
Hey, Curly. <laughs> this geezer's got a star on him. He must be the law. You bet I'm the law. Are these the fellas we're looking for, Pat? Yeah, they're the ones that stole your cake, all right, but I guess they were looking for us, too. I'll give you 15 seconds to give us back our guns and give up that cake. That tin star don't talk very loud when you haven't got artillery to back it up. Off your horses now, you two. I guess there isn't much else to do, is there, Sheriff? Uh, they aren't going to pay any attention to my ultimatum. I guess there isn't. For now, anyway. Uh, don't try anything now. There's nothing they could try squeezed in here between two pairs of 45s. Mm. Better get some ropes around them, Slugger. And we'll let them walk on up to the hideout. Well, what'll we do with them when we get them there? A boss will decide that. He'll be here after it's dark. Meanwhile, we'll let him sit and uh, look at the cake. <laughs> You can see the carnival roustabouts have been in, Rogers, but we haven't left many clues. No. Wish we had something besides candlelight. That's a nice horse, Professor Gage. Does he belong to the carnival people? Oh, of course not. He belongs... <clears throat> well, come to think about it, I don't know who he belongs to. Hey, here's a jacket or something hanging on this post. Hey, bring the candle over here, will you, Dale? Sure, Roy. I suppose we won't find anything, but... I'll just look through the pocket. Well, I, I don't know that you'd better, after all, it's someone else's jacket. Well, don't worry, Professor Gage. You don't need a warrant to look through an open premises like this. And Roy's deputized, of course. This is a pretty good jacket to belong to a carnival roustabout. Probably his dress-up outfit. Uh, uh, why don't we go back to the museum, Rogers? If the men who are using this table are the jewel thieves and they should find us in here, well, they might be dangerous. Well, might as well, I guess, I want to look at that back door again anyway. It was supposed to be jimmied open, but uh, I didn't notice any marks on it. Wait a minute, Roy. There's some little round things in the pocket of this jacket. The pearls. They've hidden the pearls out here. Hold the candle what? a second, Roy. No, no, they're certainly not pearls. They're silvery. Say, let me taste one of those things, Dale. Well, this is sweet. It's like those things you were decorating the cake with. All right, wise guy, you at least set yourself Roy. up for this room. <laughs> Professor Gage, you stole the pearls yourself. Of course I did. And I put them on your cake. Now, that takes care of your hands, Rogers. You can't reach your guns. If you drop that candle, it'll set fire to the straw. All right, Gage. You might have gotten away with it if you hadn't got jumpy and tipped your hand. This is your jacket, isn't it? It's my jacket and it's my horse, and maybe the back door wasn't Jimmy. There's nothing you can do about it now. No one like you has ever stopped me. There aren't any like me. Now, let's see... Set the candle down on the straw. And get out of here to where the boys are holding the cake. You may get a surprise when you get there. Slugger and Curly will take care of themselves. That'll take 15, 20 minutes for that candle to burn down to the straw. And then this whole stable will go up like tinder. Well, I don't like to warn a criminal, but I'm warning you. It isn't going to work. You can make all the noise you want to. The museum's closed up for the night. There's nobody in this end of town after dark. And the carnival boys aren't coming back because they were my boys. Come on, Turk, let's get out of here. And now it's time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Be a good loser. Yes, Buckaroos, that's Roy's reminder for today. You know, even the best of cowboys can't always win at riding, roping, or wrangling. And Roy wants you to know that if you should lose sometime, that's the time to grin and say to yourself, well, I just got to practice some more and build up some more strength and energy and make sure that next time I'll win. And say, buckaroos, talking about strength and energy that you need to win in almost anything you do, the best way to get it is to eat good, nourishing food like Grape Nuts Flakes. Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those swell-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you in just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bullful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you'll like sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. They have a flavor that's multi-rich, makes them mighty good to eat. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. A candle burns its way down to a bed of tinder like straw in a deserted stable. Roy and Dale are lashed to a post, helpless against the imminent flames. Roy! 
can't budge. Don't worry, Dale. Trigger, come here, boy. Well, what good will Trigger do? He can't work these ropes loose before the candle burns down to the straw. Maybe not, Dale. But if he can just stomp out that candle. Come on over here, Trigger. Over here, boy. He can't do that, Roy. Horses are deathly afraid of fire. I think Trigger can take a fire this big. Trigger, that candle, boy. Stomp it. It can't hurt you, Trigger. Get it, boy. Kick it out. Roy, he's going to do it. Closer, Trigger. Get the flame. Roy, he did it. The candle's out. Good boy, Trigger. Now get after these ropes. Hey, here comes Bullet. Hey, Bullet. Pat and the sheriff must have sent you. Roy, we'll get out of here all right. But how will we ever track Professor Gage in the dark? We won't have to track him, Dale. If the other bandits headed for Snake Canyon after they took the cake from Pat, that's where we're going. And Bullet knows something, too. Come over here, Bullet. Untie the ropes, boy. Untie them. Who? Oh, that's her. Whoa. Curly Slugger. What's the idea of this fire? Could attract attention. Well, we just wanted to guide you in, Professor. I know my way. Yeah, wait till you see what we got. The lad we took the cake off of this afternoon and a geezer with a star on. Hey, that's the third bandit, Sheriff. He was with them when they held me up this afternoon. Who are you, anyway? Why, I'm the ex-curator of the museum in Zenith, if it's any interest to you. Well, how about the cake, boys? The cake's fine. <laughs> Not a decoration out of place. Yeah, we know why you were interested in that cake. Uh, you bet we do. Yeah, they were interested in it, too. It seems it's the sheriff's birthday, and the cake was meant for him. <laughs> well, no happy return, Sheriff, because you aren't going with us. All right, Curly Slugger, get your guns out. You know what to do. I guess we do, boss. Right, Professor. Why didn't Roy come with us? Well, he never let us down before. Roy? You mean Roy Rogers? Never mind who we mean. Because if you do, he came nosing around where he shouldn't in Zenith. Boss, you didn't get caught. Of course not. I'm here. But I left Rogers and the girl in a place where it's going to be mighty hot for them. Not as hot as it's going to be for you, <laughs> Professor. Take one of them. Get off the boat, guns, because I got the drop this time. Boy, Dale, where'd you come from? We'll tell you what happened after we take care of these jewel thieves. Gage will take you first. Oh, no, Rogers! Don't! Don't! So you're a museum curator. Oh, uh, maybe he is at that, Roy. He fights like an old fossil. Yeah. He was nothing. Now, let's see. Who's the one they call Slugger? Oh, I am, but... All right. You won't even get a chance to show me how you can slug. <laughs> because you can't take it well enough. Hello, boy, Roy. Come on, Dale. Let's get ropes on these two. Roy don't need any help. Uh, your name's Curly, eh? Well, let's curl that hair a little more. Hey. Oh. None of you is very tough. Oh. In fact, you're a bunch of cake eaters. Roy, the cake, that's what we really want. Oh, it's right over there, Dale. I thought Roy was going to spill Curly into it, but he just missed. By golly, my birthday cake. Roy, I bet you didn't know this, but that cake is decorated with real pearls. Oh, Sheriff, you're kidding. No, I ain't. When we put the candles on and light them up, just watch how those pearls shine. Like I said before, I don't know what the West is coming to, but <laughs> anyhow, happy birthday, Sheriff. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Remember what Roy Rogers says, Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Roy's right, fellas and gals, as a cereal it's dandy, with milk or cream. For snacks it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Poe Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. 
nourishing puffed wheat candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Post Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. Featured in the cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Joseph Kearns, Frank Gerstle, and Ben Weldon. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. <laughs> 